That means home run. Are we both on? We ready? Yes. All right. Well, Nick, I'm sorry. Do they know my mic isn't on? It is. Oh. It is. It is on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Nick, thank you for uh, joining us here at this annual conference for being with us. Thank um, you for so having a me. lot of interest in the airport community and what you have to say. So, um, looking forward to um, looking forward to that. Wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, based on your traveling experience, first the overall broad question, based on your experience, how are airports doing and using a technology effectively to communicate with their passengers? I mean, I think um, some airlines are doing some really interesting things uh, w w within the airports. Uh, you have like Virgin America and things like that where you can get alerts and, um, and you can interact on your mobile device. And, and I think that that's really interesting. Um, and, and you're st slowly starting to see these transitions take place. One thing I think is really interesting is the idea of being able to scan barcodes on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's something that you can do at movie theaters now, at restaurants, you know, all these different things. And, and seeing that transition into the airport space is, is really exciting. Um, I think it's going to be fascinating to see, you know, how the, the check-in process changes over yeah. the few, next few years um, as it becomes even, even simpler. Um, and there's things that I'm going to talk about in my talk about, uh, that relate to that in, in the news industry, for example. So. Sure. Well, yeah, the interesting thing about the check-in process, when airports are designed in the future, you know, you're not going to have those counters in the front and all the rest if you're using technology to check in. Correct. So. And, and I think that what one, one thing that's really interesting is, is we all carry around this device with us now. Mm -hmm. um, our mobile phone, and it's it's in incredibly intelligent, and it, it can have um, a conversation with other devices. And, and you could imagine a scenario where um, your phone actually talks to the checking counter just by you walking up. Um, you know, things like that. Okay, so e easy pass for uh, airline easy passengers. Easy pass for yeah. people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Over the next few years, what technology improvements uh, should airports make uh, to meet the technology and communications uh, expectations of passengers? I think that mobile is, is just huge. I mean, I think that you know, right now there's 4.6 billion mobile phones in the world. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, there's hundreds of millions of smartphones, and that number is just going to continue to grow. Um, and I think that being able to create experiences around mobile devices is going to be of the utmost importance to the next generation um, of, of airline travelers, and also making things social um, and interactive. Um, and uh, and we're starting to see that a little bit now, but uh, but I think over the next few years it c it could be really important. And then also anything that can that can make the experience you know I mean by making it more social, mm -hmm. um, when you're standing in a line, you know I mean I stood in eleven lines to get here, you know <laughs> eleven um, lines. W w when you're standing in these lines or or you're waiting, you know having the ability to interact with people I think is 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 really important. So somehow figuring out how to do do that with technology. Well, it's interesting. Eleven lines. Uh, did you connect or was it a nonstop? Flight? No, it was nonstop. I mean I, so I waited to get to the airport in a, in a line. I, I waited to, to check in, I waited to give them my bag, I waited to go through security. I, you know, it was just one after the other after the other. And, and, um, and the whole time I'm sitting there looking at my mobile phone. And so if you could somehow figure out a way to make that more engaging and, and even take advantage of that experience a little hmm. bit with, the, with the consumer, um, I think could be, could be fascinating. You know, talking to passengers, information really is the key. They yeah. want to know what's going on. If their flight's delayed, they want to know why and so forth. So how much, uh, several part question, how, how much do uh, information do passengers expect airlines and airports to provide them in advance of flights, do you think? For example, providing information on delays or cancellations, airport parking, discounts, food food options um, at the airport, whether there's enhanced security provisions, those kind of things. Um. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I think that one of the things that, that we're going to start to see happen with, um, with pretty much everything outside the airport space, right, in, in, in the media world is that um, your content's going to become hyper-personalized, right? So, you know, my, my New York Times on my iPad is going to know what time of day it is, where I'm located, what I've read already, and it's going to adapt and change to that. And I think that the same thing should happen with your travel experience, right? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to go and log in somewhere and check to see if the flight is delayed it should just tell me, you know, right. I should be notified. And I think that, um, that, that those kinds of experiences where, you know, if, it, if it's four o'clock and I'm in the airport um, and it knows my flight's at six, it can say, hey, here's a great place to go get something to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, th there could be these kinds of recommendations and experiences that, sure. that focus on that. Well, speaking of personalizing information for passengers, that sort of leads into the next question. Where do you see location-based smartphone apps like 
uh, Foursquare, GoWalla, uh, Shopkick fitting into travel, uh, especially in the concession area, car rentals, those kinds of things at the airports. I, I think it's going to be huge. I mean, I think that, that these location-based services, it's, it's essentially the, the, the local advertising of the future, right? You know, that, that's gone away with the, with the, the transition from newspapers. And, um, and, and they're looking, people are looking for, for, businesses are looking for ways to talk to people um, on, on a local level, and, um, and with, with the digital devices, you, you can get hyper-local. And, um, and, you know, Foursquare, which I'll talk about a little bit in the talk, um, is, is a fascinating way of doing that. I mean, you check into places, you leave tips for your friends, you get points and badges, and it, it becomes a game. The entire experience of, of, of traveling through a city or whatever you're doing becomes a game, and I think that, um, that those kinds of things will, will really become relevant to, to the traveling experience, for, for the, especially for the next generation that, that's a gaming generation. Yeah, it's an interesting analogy, the gaming generation. I have a couple of 20-something-year-old kids, and. It's a very interesting analogy. Really, hadn't thought about it that way before, but I think you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, I think that if you look at, um, at the generation that's grown up with, with print books and magazines and things like that, for them, that's that's their that's what they've consumed. And and, and this next generation has grown up with video games. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't mean that they're not going to consume print magazines and books and things like that, or or at least on, on digital devices. But but gaming for them is 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 just a part of their their DNA. And I think that you, you started to see that what with with things like Foursquare, where it makes this whole idea of recommending restaurants a game, and it mm -hmm. is incredibly successful, uh, you're going to start to see that, that transition into other things, too. Let's sort of look down the road a little bit. Do you see a role for augmented reality uh, apps in business and pleasure travel, and what role would you see for an airport in that? Yeah, I mean, I think that you could you can imagine you know uh, uh, semicodes throughout the airport where you could get information by scanning with your phone. Mm -hmm. um, augmented reality, I think, um, is a few years ahead of itself right now. It's almost like the technology isn't really ready for mainstream, but I think when it is and when it when it actually works properly, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be pretty fascinating because you could hold up a device and you could say, "Hey, I'm at the airport. Um, show me where the restaurants are, so I don't have to walk 4,000 feet to find, you know, uh, or or does does that place have that magazine or whatever it is?" Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, that as that starts to take place, it, it could become really relevant. But but again, it's it's almost like there the augmented reality of today is the mobile phone 20 years ago, where you had to walk around with a briefcase and. The, you know, sure. Like that. Well, you know, we were, we were talking before about your 11 lines earlier and the hassle factor and yep. travel certainly has become a major uh, issue. We're talking about these communications advances uh, that make uh, communication easier. Um, do you see vi things like video conferencing and so, and so forth as a threat to the role of the airport? Uh, eventually, it, I think it will be, um, and I think that, that what's going to happen is, um, I mean, I've, I have these fascinating experiences where I've been to some of these, these really, really intense video conference experiences where you walk into a room and, and somebody's in Japan and you're here and the room is exactly the same in both places and you can't chew gum because that would, would you know, they, hmm. they, they, their brain over there uh, can't smell it so something doesn't line up, but it's, it's all very controlled. And, and, um, and it's fascinating because you actually do feel like you're in the same room with these people. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, and I, I just wrote the, this book and one of the things I talk about is like the far, far future is, is you know, in the future we won't, have, um, we won't have wallpaper, we'll have screens on our walls, right? And so you could say, I want, I want to have dinner in Venice tonight. And that wall becomes, you know, becomes wow. that scene. And and you could imagine um, a scenario where you're um, uh, you're watching a movie with people that are not even in the same city as you, um, mm -hmm. with friends and family that are that are somewhere else, and, and you're sharing this experience. And you could pretty much do everything but pass the ketchup, right? And mm -hmm. so I think that <clears throat> as that happens, um, I think some some quicker, more leisurely travel or some quicker business travel will will probably start to to go away unless. Um, I think the airports can figure out ways to make it much simpler and quicker and, and less painful with those 11 lines. Well, it certainly would make it easier for a guy who forgot his anniversary and wanted to take his wife to Venice for dinner exactly. that night. I yeah. guess it would make it easier in that kind of situation. Yeah. Um, uh, one, one last question I'd like to ask you. Um, let's say I'm a new airport director, I'm brand new. Uh, maybe I was hired from outside the airport business, so I've come in. Um, and I'm really interested in improving the experience for my passengers and taking the best advantage of technology. What are the first couple things you think I should do? Um, I think that, that one thing is, is, just, is just to try to figure out ways to connect with the, with the passenger. Um, and, and, and you do that through social media, you do that through Twitter and Facebook and Foursquare and all these other experiences. And, and it just, I think giving the, the passenger access to information 
um, is, is just is, is one step in making them feel more comfortable um, because they know what, 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 what they're doing, they, they understand what's taking place. And, you know, why do I have to, um, when I go to an airport, why can't I download um, or go to a web page with a, a map of the airport on my phone? Mm -hmm. You know, why do I have to find the map somewhere else? Right. Um, and I think that, that uh, thinking about those things, I think, is, is really important. And it's just, it's just developing a conversation. Well, thank you very much, Nick. My You've pleasure. given us thank a you. lot to think about, and um, we're, we're happy you're here and look forward to um, talking to you some more. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Right. <clears throat> very interesting. That's uh, you know, Venice on the Wall. And yeah. Pretty exciting. I hadn't really thought about some of those things, but that's...